Hey guys! Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I finally filmed this. This is my very highly requested, surprisingly, hair routine. Thank you guys so much. I cannot even fathom the amount of people that have watched my routine across platforms. Like, that is insane. And thank you guys so, so much. I'm so grateful. Sorry it took me so long. I'm literally in the middle of moving. This is not a glamorous, simple, basic routine, by the way. If you're looking for something quick and easy, this is not it. I'm going to be doing a lot of explaining because I want you guys to learn with me or learn what I learned because it really took me a long time because I feel like people focus so much on making like videos that look and sound nice and that are like easy to follow along with but not everything is simple unfortunately and if you're really willing to learn this is for you and I hope you stick through and listen to it all because it's a lot. A lot of the things I say might be unfamiliar or like counterintuitive for a lot of people i invite you to watch this with an open mind and not be judgmental until i kind of explain everything unless like i'm just being dramatic and like everyone's like that's so normal but curly hair community can be very judging so i just want to put that out there my routine is something that prioritizes long-term hair health and texture rather than like making it look good in the now and compromising how healthy or good it looks in the long term so the more you do this the better your hair will get which is exactly what happened to me i find that like a lot of youtube videos or influencer videos are more of those quick fix types and i say that being fully aware that i can be considered an influencer too so take this how you will i'm just gonna relay what i've learned from stylists and obviously i'm not a stylist myself so I'm going to give you guys some resources to check out or on where I learned what I learned but I'm going to try my best to put it all together for you guys and make it simple. <laughs> Obviously to each their own but I found that when I switched from the curly girl method to listening to hairstylists that's when my hair started getting like ringlets. Maybe I'll find a picture of my hair how it was before. It used to be more of waves but it kind of evolved into a more tighter curl and tighter texture and less frizz as I started doing this routine. Everyone's hair is obviously different. I'm just basing this off of what stylists say and obviously they see so many clients and they can kind of make the patterns and make the connections in their head to see what works for the majority of people and obviously I'm going to try what works for the majority because that's probably going to work for me. One thing that really changed my hair is, this is really controversial, but not using oil. Now there's so much discourse about this online but personally that's one of the things I've found has made the biggest difference to my hair like not oiling my hair anymore. I'm brown, I grew up oiling my hair but that was a big thing that changed the texture of my hair. It's not looking too great now to be honest but you'll see it in the video. The overall health of my hair, the feel, the shine and everything like that. don't use any like butters in my products anymore. I used to do that as well like shea butter no oils in my products unless they're cold pressed which the stylists say are like different and they're easier to wash out of the hair i also don't straighten my hair anymore i haven't done it for two years and to be honest i only straightened it around like two to four times a year before that anyway sometimes like never in a year but this is the longest i've gone without ever straightening it and of course straightening it is going to affect the curl pattern the curl doctor i think his name is he describes it as like pulling a telephone wire a whole bunch eventually it's not going to look like a full ringlet anymore with all that said there are so many factors that influence your curls like hormones age diet water like environment for example my hair here is so much more like dull in the uk by the way because the water has chalk in it and the environment is a little bit more dry than it is in hong kong which my hair looks a lot better in unless i'm like always going out and then it's too humid so obviously there's like so many factors that play into it and it's going to be individual for everyone in every place what i'm sharing with you is my routine like 90 percent of the time unless i'm going to a, an event or a photo shoot in that case i'll do a similar thing but in a lot more sections this i do in like one massive section but like in a specific way but i used to do my hair in like more than 20 sections for sure because the more you section it the more defined and frizz free each curl is gonna get but that's not as much what i value anymore now i value like movement more making it look good like 
majority of the time rather than having to like fix it up all the time but i found that i don't need to do as many sections with the products i've been using now because i think my hair is kind of learning to deal with itself on its own without the need for products anymore which is why i love this routine so much it just makes your hair get better and better over time rather than relying on the products you're using okay let's talk about how often i wash my hair i used to try and go as long as possible without doing it because i thought that's what's best for your hair and that's what i heard online and things like that but when you talk to dermatologists a lot of them say that a lot of people don't wash their hair enough and you should wash your hair as much as it can handle and of course i'm not going to do that because it's such a hassle but a lot of dandruff issues come from clients not washing their hair enough and my dandruff have like basically disappeared now when i started washing my hair more which kind of makes sense but you hear so much on the internet you're just like you know it's, it gets really confusing but yeah i do it twice a week um, i used to do it once a week maybe even once every 10 days i try to do it twice or thrice a week now thrice is like a lot for me because you can see how long this routine takes and my hair looks best on day three i assume the argument for not washing your hair as much is because so many curly hair products are not doing what they should be for your hair and companies really mislead their customers because they want things that like feel good and are just like instant gratification so they're not actually doing what's best for your hair and when you wash it too much you see the unfortunate result of that but when you use the right products washing it more is probably going to benefit you at least in my experience and at least from what i've heard dermatologists say for their clients okay let's talk about getting into the shower now if you have fine hair this is going to be different but for me i don't brush my hair i just hop in straight into the shower but if you have more fine hair you want to brush it beforehand if you have coarse thick curlier hair it can get damaged when you brush it dry so you want to brush it when there's conditioner in there if you have finer straighter hair you want to brush it before you get in the shower because it can be more damaged when it's wet so keep that in mind i like to wet my hair really really thoroughly before i put shampoo in it so i move it around everything get under every bit every part of my scalp and hair should be wet before i shampoo it i like to apply my shampoo in sections because my hair is so thick and there's just like a lot of it if i don't do that it's just like a mess and i use too much in some places and not enough in others with this and most high-end shampoos you really want to suds it in your hand before you get it in your hair so i'm using the inner sense pure harmony hair bath that is a really really nice shampoo it has cold pressed oil so it's not gonna stick in your hair after you rinse it out with water by the way not at all affiliated with inner sense but i truly truly wish i was so just like the water i flip my hair around when i'm shampooing it a lot because i want to get in every little place this is really important you need to get what's in your hair out of your hair it needs to be fresh clean i also put a little bit of product on my ends just so that whatever product is on them is getting out as well and at first i would leave it in my hair for a little while because when you first switch from using oils like oiling your hair or using shea butter and if this is you and you want to stop using heavy oils then what you want to do is get a clarifying shampoo the one i've heard recommended is malibu undo goo but i didn't want to get this because you only have to use it once so you're buying it for one wash basically there's a theory that if you want to use oil in your hair maybe it's good for your hair you know obviously some people it benefits a lot but specifically textured hair people it's maybe going to make your hair more frizzy and that's what hairstylists have found but if you want to use oil on your hair the only way to get it out is to use a clarifying shampoo which is way too stripping and is going to damage your hair so the oils are not really worth it another hairstylist was talking about how if you don't want to use a clarifying shampoo you can just leave your shampoo all along your hair for a little bit and hopefully that kind of acts as a clarifying shampoo over time but more gently but it will take longer of course to get all the buildup off of your hair so that's what i was doing at first it's also so 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 important to rinse your hair out properly when you have shampoo in it because a lot of that whatever like stickiness on your scalp afterwards or the reason why you feel oily right after a shower is because maybe you haven't rinsed out your shampoo properly so you want to rinse it out as well as you put it in another slightly controversial thing that i do is shampoo my hair twice now i did not want to believe this one i really didn't because who wants to use double the amount of shampoo not me at all but then i tried it and it, 
it works well. <laughs> I also heard a stylist say that shampoos that don't suds actually do suds when your hair is clean. So if you do it the first time and it doesn't suds, watch the second time and it will and that's how you know your hair is clean. And I didn't want that to be true, but you can really feel the difference. So it is something I've implemented. As I rinse out my shampoo, I kind of put my hair into a certain way. So like this onwards will be facing over here and here, like the crown area will be on the sides. And then the back of my head will be down here. So my hair is like evenly spread out throughout my hair and I'm looking forward. It makes it a lot easier to distribute the products evenly throughout my hair because I don't want to do sections all the time. Okay, I have very high porosity hair, which means that water gets out of it very easily and it dries like super quick. And the shampoo has really helped me because unlike heavy oil shampoos, this actually allows the water to get into my hair because there's nothing coating my hair anymore. So my hair feels like so heavy after I get out of the shower and my hair stays wet like in a way that it's never stayed before and I didn't know that's what hair was meant to feel like but a lot of hairstylists that I've been to tell me my hair feels very dry as soon as I take it out of the water and I was just like I don't really know what that means obviously like I understand what they're saying but this really really made me, made me realize what they were saying because now it doesn't happen as much once I stop using heavy oil. Okay, so following this, my hair is really, really ready to receive the conditioner very well. And I have never, ever had seaweed feeling hair. As soon as I started using this conditioner, maybe in combination with the shampoo and not using oils so that the conditioner can actually get into my hair, I have experienced the seaweed hair. And I don't know if I did in this video. Unfortunately, that is very hard to achieve in the UK because the water has chalk in it. So it's like powdered water basically that you're putting in your hair but when i went back home to hong kong oh my gosh i was really living the life with seaweed hair like i couldn't believe that i achieved that in the shower for the first time ever i want to be here in the sun but the sun keeps like going down so there's no point in me being there and then going back to bad lighting so i'm just gonna stay in the bad lighting i'm sorry if it's annoying so with the conditioner i don't need as much as i normally would need in using different conditioners because these products are very, very concentrated, they're, they don't have as much water as most hair products do in them. So as you're putting them in your hair, you need to use a lot of water alongside them. Like even with the shampoo, I always put more water in my hair as I'm scrubbing rather than adding more shampoo, I add more water first. But I do add shampoo like multiple times. When I'm conditioning or using any type of, again, like oil product, so that's most hair products like even though this has cold pressed oil it still has oil in it i want to avoid it getting on my scalp so when i'm done showering my hair doesn't feel oily and i didn't do a very good job at it this time and you'll see when my hair is dry what that does to my hair and it's really annoying but you live and you learn <laughs> so another thing stylists recommend is using your fingers to brush through your hair brush through your hair when you have conditioner in it because your fingers can feel when you have any type of tension in your hair and it can work through it when you're using a brush it's really hard to tell when it's like tense obviously you need to pull it a bit more but it's nowhere near the amount you can tell when you're using your fingers and when you brush it through it really like pulls the hair stretches the curls and i used to use a denman brush and it used to give me really good definition but this has made my hair look so much better over time just detangling with, with my fingers and no it's not that hard especially with a conditioner like this i was finding it difficult honestly after coming back to the uk this was my first hair wash in the uk so my hair was like freaking out with the chalk in it but still it's so much easier than any conditioner i've used before in the uk or out of it every time i start to struggle with the detangling process i add more water in my hair and that makes it like so much more easier it's a solution 80 percent of the time and the other 20 percent, you need to add more conditioner now when i start rinsing the conditioner out you can really tell how good it is for my hair because of the way it clumps and clumping is a sign of healthiness in the hair so keep that in mind the more you do this routine the more clumping you're going to get because i did not used to get as much clumping as this but it's a good thing this step is optional and I recommend going without it first and using my last step instead of this step first but I use a curl cream from the same brand and I'm not a fan of curl creams at all 
but this one is the best I've used for sure. But it's very tricky to use. If you use too much, your hair will have that like stickiness and you can see the, the product in your hair. And if you use too little, it doesn't give you hold. So if you're a really big fan of creams, I would recommend it. If not, I would say skip it and go to the last step, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So I use a small amount. What I've used here is all I use. I didn't add any more after it. And same with the conditioner. I put it through my hands in between my fingers and rake it in the same way. And I really want to work it through. But again, because I use a gel after one, I avoid the roots. This prevents it from getting oily. But if you only use a cream, you might want to go to the roots. But... I, I just, I didn't do a very good job at staying away from the roots, to be honest, and you'll see again what it does to my hair. So if you have oily hair, I really would recommend don't even go near the top of your head because it's just not worth it unless you're going to add a whole bunch of water. The sun is being more consistent, so I'm going to sit in the sun for a little bit. Again, the key to this whole routine is adding a lot of water. So when I do my curl cream, I'm adding like so much water. It's insane. You would think that the curl cream washes out your hair. But it doesn't. Again, there's a fine line, of course, but you can use a lot of water and it won't fully wash out. As you're raking it through, it's really important to not just rake it one way now. So as much as I have the clumps, my goal is to separate the clumps completely and get every single strand of hair coated in product so that it can move on its own. Because if I just put the product on how the clumps are, then when it's dry and I separate my clumps, not all the hair is going to have product, especially because I have a lot of it. It's really hard to cover every strand and then that's going to be frizzy once I separate the clump. So my job is in the shower to separate it using a lot of water and a bit of product. So I'm kind of raking it this way and then I lift up the root of my hair and kind of rake it horizontally so that I'm getting every part and just trying to break up the clump as much as possible and get all the strands within it. So this hair routine literally looks like a horror movie but that's how i look in the shower and that's just the truth <laughs> this is my favorite step the flaxseed gel okay i make this by myself it's my favorite product in the world as much as i love inner sense flaxseed gel takes the cake 100 because you can make it yourself at home so incredibly cheap and so quick to make i can do a tutorial if you guys want and i just I'm obsessed with it and I'm obsessed with the results. It doesn't look at all like a gel. It makes your hair look like you have nothing at all in it. And I just apply this the same way I apply my curl cream, but I use a lot of flexi gel. Even though you add so much, it won't look like too much when your hair is dry. And that's like the biggest thing I look for in a hair product because that's always the biggest struggle. So the flexi gel is so amazing because it's so versatile and it's technically a gel but it doesn't act at all like a gel. Like it feels like it when you're applying it in your hair, but when you're out of the shower, it looks, smells, feels like nothing is in your hair. It just feels so nice, soft, defined. I have put everyone onto this product and it's better than anything on the market that I've used personally. The gel is when I start going into my roots a lot more because it's not gonna cause any oiliness and make my hair feel kind of gross afterwards like a cream or a conditioner would. So I really recommend it for people with oily scalps. But with that said, flaxseed gel can sometimes flake a little bit and look a little bit like dandruff, which has happened to me a couple of times. Nowhere near as much as regular gels do, but you want to make sure you're getting water into that scalp to make sure that doesn't happen. I'm also trying to focus on putting the hair into the place I want it to lay when it's dry. So I like to brush it all kind of backwards with my fingers and really focus on lifting, especially the crown, the roots of the crown away from my hair. And I really failed to do it this time. Again, we'll see how it looks when it's dry, but that is a big mistake because you don't want that just top of your hair to be flat and the rest to be like voluminous. And this ensures that your hair is gonna stay in the direction you want it to stay once it's dry. And it also makes sure you have movement in your hair because if there's no movement at the scalp, then a lot of like when you flip your hair, it's just not going to happen. And I prioritize movement so it looks good in all situations. Obviously, curly hair never does that, but you know, as much as it can because I don't like it to stay stiff and on my scalp. Now I can bring my hair to the front again now that it's all like done at the roots but I will do it very carefully so that it doesn't disrupt where I've put the root hairs just like I'm just moving the hair at the bottom now. I just then do a final coat of flaxseed just like with kind of prayer hands down my hair and I do it on as much as hair as I can get. If I need more flaxseed gel I'll use it 
and I'll really break it through. I really, really can't emphasize this enough. Separating the curls, separating the clumps, and making sure every curl moves on its own is so important. That's what makes your hair have that like Disney hair movement. It's the front pieces of my hair. A lot of the times they start to look a little frumpy like, like this, but I like them to look like this. So I focus at the very end of my shower on the front pieces. I add a little bit more gel and I really focus on making sure they move as well so that when they're out of the shower, they don't look frizzy because I like to leave them down a lot. So they're also my framing pieces, very important. Even though I add more product, I always end with a splash of water on my hair. Water is the key. This is why I do I'm routine in the shower. This is why it's hard to film. It's not glamorous, but that's how it is. So my hair is looking good right now. It looks all hydrated, shiny, all of that, and it moves on its own. Each curl has a movement of its own. That's ideal. Now I'm going to dry it. Now a lot of curly hair methods will tell you don't use a towel. That's like the number one rule, you know, basics of curly girl method is not to use a towel. But I used to do that. And I found when I use the right products and the right routine, it doesn't make that much of a difference anymore. I used to like never touch a towel because it would frizz up my hair so much. But I don't, really, I don't even need to use a t-shirt or a microfiber anymore. I just use a regular towel and it doesn't make much of a difference. Also, if anything, it gives your hair a little adversity to deal with when it's dry. So I just like to, you know, not be too crazy about it anymore like I used to be. It just helps it look more realistic and natural and effortless when you have it dry, which is the goal for me. I like to give my hair some movement while it's drying. So I'll flip it to one side and then the other and then upside down. Just make sure the roots are like lifting off my scalp as much as possible because I don't want anything sticking to my hair. I don't even like volume that much to be honest. I like my hair to go down, but I just need to make sure nothing's sticking to my scalp. After getting out of the shower, I do that one more time just to make sure it's all nice and dry with a towel before I start using my hair dryer. Now, I don't use a diffuser like I used to. Again, I don't really feel the need anymore just because my hair feels healthy enough to like not have to be so careful with it as I've gone on with this routine but you can totally use a diffuser I still do it sometimes but I just like to blow my hair into the direction that I want it to lay but also my priority is to get the hair that dries the, the slowest so that it dries at the same rate as the rest of my hair because these parts are super difficult to get dry just by air drying and by not moving my hair around. I really focus on the crown area and the base of my neck a lot because the roots tend to dry the last and it's something that needs to be the most dry just because I don't want any type of moisture on my scalp when I go to bed and I usually do this a couple hours before bed. Having dry hair when you sleep is so important because if not, then the fungus will start to develop in your hair and you'll get dandruff. I also like to use downward motions like this so that it kind of closes the cuticle because I have a high porosity hair. I need that cuticle to be closed. Sometimes I use a diffuser when I really need the roots to be dry because it helps me get in there better. This is how it's looking after drying and this is after a few hours right before I go to bed and it's a lot fluffier now. I like it to set a little bit more before I go out, so yeah. This is me before bed and this is how I sleep with my hair, especially on day one. I just put it all towards the top and get the front bits out because I want them definitely not to be stretched by my little bun here. And all I do, I don't even twist it, I just flip the hair to the front and put the ponytail around the hair to make a little bun like this but if you have shorter hair you don't need to wrap the hair around itself here i am in the morning taking my hair down and as you can see it's a little bit matted not really but not as much movement as the night before and i'm going to show you how i fix that so there's a lot of clumping going on and we really want to separate those clumps but before we do that here is a bit that i was really annoyed about it wasn't lifted off the roots in the crown area so it looked really like pressed down stuck to my scalp so i just kind of put my fingers in horizontally and lift it all up now i like to flip my hair around a lot so i like it to move throughout the day and therefore i need it to be movable so i separate a lot of the hairs from the roots especially the ones that i move around a lot and i did that all throughout my hair this is how it looks at the end it doesn't take too long you can just do the important pieces 
So throughout the day, I don't always leave my hair completely down. It tends to puff up a bit. So I just do a really, really loose ponytail with all the hair going towards the back and middle of my head. And then I just loosen up the roots a little bit so that the hair on the top of my head doesn't get pulled and basically ruins the curl a little bit. I like to use a scrunchie that's super loose and silky. Anyway, that's my curly hair routine. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I know it's like so much and like long and full of explanations and not cute, but I really appreciate it. And I would have really appreciated a video like this when I first started on my journey because it would have cut me a lot of time and my hair would be like so much more healthier than it is now. But yeah, take what you want. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. It's totally fine. That's just what worked for me and hopefully something that works for you too. If you like the video, please consider subscribing. I love making informative beauty videos and your comments light up my day. Constructive criticism is also always welcome. <laughs>